Thank you for joining us today. Really excited to talk to you about what we've got in, in, on, uh, on store today. Um, we're here to cover off achieving radical resilience with Veeam's data security capabilities. My name is Zabair. I'm one of the account executives here at Veeam, and I'm joined with Dave Collins, one of our systems engineers. Hi, everybody. Yeah, Dave Collins. Um, I work in technical pre-sales at Veeam, um, and I've been in the uh, IT industry for 30 plus years, predominantly around uh, disaster recovery and, and backup. So uh, that's, that's my bag. Nice. Thank you, Dave. Um, we've got a decent agenda for you today. We're going to cover off some ransomware trends. We're going to go into some of Veeam's data security capabilities. Um, we're also going to navigate a cyber attack and talk around some concepts as well as some misconceptions as well um, out in the world. Um, and we'll finish off with some of Veeam's data security best practices as well, something for you guys to take away. Um, one thing I will say, there are a number of QR codes throughout the session, so feel free to get your phones out, take a snap, take a scan as we go through this. Um, I'll kick off with our ransomware trend stuff. Um, one thing that Veeam do every year is a data protection trends report. It's a completely anonymous report, both from a Veeam perspective out to the participants and equally the participants not knowing whether it's Veeam asking those questions. We work with an independent marketing research company that helps us build this report. Over the last four or five years that we've done this, we've come up with a lot more questions. And one question that we've seen constantly throughout this is around event frequency, specifically how many ransomware attacks has your organization suffered in the last 12 months? Fortunately, the figures are quite stark, as you can see. Um, the latest report for 2023 shows that 75% of the participants had suffered a ransomware attack in 2023. More shockingly, um, more organizations were hit four times or more in a single year in comparison to those that weren't hit at all or believe not to be hit at all. As with many of these things, it's really subjective. So depending on whether those organizations actually told the truth or equally know whether they've been breached is another conversation. Um, Within the report, there's a lot more depth and detail, specifically around ransomware trends. But one of the key things here is um, an organization, whenever they're being hit, as I'm sure some of you guys have probably seen or faced or, or at least been made aware of from some of the public news that's out there, is it really brings down the organization, down to its employee confidence, to supplier confidence, to the, the general perception of that brand. And it can have lasting impacts as well. And of course, there's also the monetary effect with costs or fines and all these other kind of things for, for, for any breaches. So it's definitely worth considering how you can ensure that your data remain, remains protected, especially as environments are changing, things are adapting, and, and people are moving to new worlds. Dave, over to you. We'll go into actually navigating a cyber attack. <laughs> so this is a, a, a really um, complex slide that I'll start to build out, and I, and I can never do it off by heart, unfortunately. But um, it's titled Understanding Cyber Attacks. Now, I don't know, the perception maybe is that you know, somebody hacks your system today and you get a, ransom, a ransomware note and that's it. Well, the reality probably is that ransomware attacks generally occur over a, an extended period of time. And this timeline on here happens to be 12 months, but I'm not saying every, every ransomware attack takes place over 12 months, but over an extended period of time. During that period of time, there are various stages that the, the, the threat actors will, will um, you know, embark upon in, in your environment. First of all, you know, observing that environment, sneaking in, you know, taking uh, you know, a base of operations, I think we like to refer to it as. But um, it's not something that happens on day one. Uh, it, it, it happens over that extended period of time. Whilst they get into your system, you know, they need to maximize their attack ultimately. So they're in no hurry, they want to get it right, they could kind of get one go at it once they're in. So having visibility of that early, early you know, as early as possible is kind of quite key now. You know, we all, all heard of sleeping ransomware and sleeping malware, etc. But part of what Veeam are doing today is introducing security um, services into our product set. So not just from a immutability perspective, which we've had immutability in the product for, for, for many, many years now, <clears throat> excuse me, making your backups, you know, immutable so they can't be deleted, they can't be encrypted, they can't be attacked by uh, a ransomware attack. But having the ability to monitor those backups, to scan those backups during, during that, that period of time, potentially giving you early notification of something that's unusual. Um, you know, we, we can do We'll come into more detail, but you know, sort of block level scanning at, at virtual machine level, for example, 
you know, something's changed, you don't necessarily know what it is, a payload hasn't necessarily been um, deployed at that stage, uh, period of time, but something unusual has happened. And each of those points, the little round circles on the, on the screen there, you know, potentially where you might be taking a backup, and therefore potentially an opportunity to notice that something is going on. Over that 12-month period, you've got those various different um, sections in there, but you know, ultimately ending up in a, a, a ransomware event being declared, by which point they've you know, done the damage, as it were. Um, embrace the breach. So the QR code there is for um, the NCSC page that gives you the principle of embracing the breach. I'll talk a little bit about zero trust as well. Um, you know, assume the worst rather than you know, deal with it as an exception. So establish the context before de designing any system. Um, these are all NCSC best practices which we sort of incorporate into our, um, our narrative, as it were, but make compromise difficult for, for those threat actors. Make disruption difficult, but also make it um, easier for you to detect that disruption before it becomes uh, a big issue. And obviously then reduce the impact that that potential um, compromise can have on your environment. Zero trust, zero trust is not a product as some people may consider. Zero trust is a, is a concept and that concept, again, about, about embracing the breach, you know, give people access by exception, not as a general rule, you know, have immutability in your, in your in your uh, tool set, ensure that you know, backups are immutable. System resilience, you know, proactive validation and operational simplicity are all parts of the zero trust um, concept. Those two uh, QR codes, again, worth, worth um, downloading, quite lengthy documents, far too detailed to go into at this stage, but it does give you the basis for that, uh, that zero trust approach. And just at a high level, you know, from a backup infrastructure point of view, and this isn't Veeam specific, but it's, it's you know, best practice when it comes to any backup solution. Keep your backups away from your production environment where possible, whether that's on-prem, whether it's cloud, whatever that, you know, if it's hybrid, doesn't matter. But keep your backup software separate to your production software, so you've got that ability to, to utilize it in the event of an attack. But more importantly, probably, is keep those backups separate from that and preferably immutable. And the old 321 policy that we talk about all the time, keep one of those copies of data somewhere else. Back over to you. Cheers, Dave. So before we go into Veeam's specific data security capabilities, just from the data protection trends report, another question that we posed to our participants was, which would you consider to be the most important aspect of a modern or innovative data protection solution for your organization? And, and, and three key things came out of this. The first is it needs to be cyber integrated. Um, there is a lot more focus around ensuring there is resiliency within the technology as well as integration into true cybersecurity tools as well. So Veeam's implementing a lot of that and has implemented over the years a lot of that integration within the technology itself, but with further partnerships and alliance partnerships with some key vendors out there. Second is um, need and mobility across clouds. Uh, as we've said, environments are changing, things are adapting, and so having more focus around what mobility means to an organization is important, not only from the perspective of where they can utilize the environments to, to best use for their business or their organization, but also ensuring that the data remains protected or can be recovered to those locations as, if it's ever required. And finally, 20% want manageability. And manageability can be quite a vague term, but certainly from this, one of the key things here is around automate recovery workflows and orchestration, being able to have something that's seamless and have something that's set up with true understanding for the business. So it's not with somebody who might leave or just a, a manual process. It's something that's constantly adapting and constantly changing as your business adapts and changes as well. And really a lot of this underpins three key pillars from Veeam, which is data security, data recovery, and data freedom. I'll touch into, Dave can go to the next slide, into, into Veeam's data platform and what this actually means. So Veeam covers a, a wide portfolio of things. We go from cloud, virtual, physical, applications, and SaaS. As you can see, we've got some of our extensions there with some of the hyperscalers, Kubernetes, when we talk around containers, as well as SaaS platforms such as Microsoft 365 and Salesforce. And a lot of this is underpinned by 
the backup and recovery, Veeam's core heritage product, as well as our monitoring analytics, really bringing in some of those, those logs, that information from external bodies to make better use and understanding of what's happening with your environment, not just your backups, but equally giving you a full picture of, of your data, as well as that recovery orchestration piece, as I mentioned. So giving you that automation and orchestration to really flex out what you need. Um, Consumption-wise, Veeam offers this in, in a multitude of ways. Three down here at the bottom, on-premise, in the cloud, or as a service. Really true flexibility as to how you can approach this. And if we click one forward, Dave, you can see here that Veeam really has two key areas to this. One is do it yourself, so you can buy the licenses, run it yourself, build your environment as you need to, and really change and adapt. So the power and the freedom is, is with you. It's really up to you how you then define what your environment looks like today and equally what changes you might need to make in the future. Veeam sits at the heart of the infrastructure in that conversation, really allows you to focus on moving as you need to and adapting as you need to. The other side of it is looking at it from a as a service perspective. So taking away the headache, taking away the challenges of resource or even sometimes the challenge of cost and really doing it for you guys with still access to your data, still the ability to cover what you need but with the support from Veeam, support from and the experts uh, at hand for you guys. I know we're here talking about data security and so we'll, we'll transition back to that, but hopefully that gives you a good understanding of, of some of the freedom aspects when it comes to Veeam and what you can do with, with Veeam and the technology at hand. Dave. So, <clears throat> um, we released the latest iteration of our Veeam data platform at, at Q4 last year. Um, and whilst we've always, always had a security focus, um, the integration between you know, the security team and the, and, the, and the infrastructure team, the data protection teams in, in, in businesses is more important than ever. Um, and Veeam recognises that and a lot of the new functions and features that we have in our products uh, today are, are very much security focused. And thinking back to that, slide with the with the 12-month um, time frame on it, you know, the first point on here is early threat detection. Now, we're not trying to be a security vendor. We're not competing with the guys in the, you know, who are upstairs today, but having your backups that are in, in your environment running day in, day out, um, giving that the ability to give you some form of early threat detection. So we have uh, our new inline malware detection engine um, that has come into the latest release. This allows us to inspect uh, a virtual machine, for example, as the backup is taking place, looking at you know, block level um, or, or indeed file level um, changes. So you know, we'll take a baseline on day one and create a set of metadata that you know, tells us what that machine looks like on day one. And as the, as the backups run daily, weekly, hourly, however you have them configured, we're inspecting that virtual machine, you know, literally at the, at the block level. Now, that doesn't mean that, you know, we found uh, an infection that you know, your other services haven't found. It means that we might have found something that's an indicator, something that's wrong, and we'll notify you of that. doesn't mean it's a, you know, a piece of malware, but it means that you know, we're, we're inspecting and giving you potentially that uh, early threat warning. Proactive threat hunting. Um, Part of, again, part of our future is integration with uh, third parties in the security space particularly. But um, today we have native integration with ServiceNow platform, um, giving you true sort of two-way um, incident notification um, from a whole different set of perspectives, not just malware, but other, other issues that may be taking place in your backup environment. But also SIEM integration um, from a, a syslog level and more and more uh, third-party native integrations coming down the line as well. And then we have something called our Veeam Instant API. So this is, this is the ability for a third-party um, you know, MDR service, for example, to notify your backup infrastructure of an infection. So not waiting for, to, for you to find it locally, but having a, th a third-party literally tell Veeam or tell your, your Veeam solution you've got a problem with this virtual machine. And then Veeam can do, you know, take a backup or isolate it from a backup or put a copy somewhere else. There's lots of different things that we can do with that, that virtual machine, you know, giving you that, uh, uh, that extra level of protection. 
And then we talk about respond and recover. Um, we've had malware scanning in our recovery process, I think, for five years now. Um, again, using third-party integration um, with you know, various AV vendors, or mo most AV vendors, to be fair. But the ability to recover a virtual machine, or recover a workload back into your production environment, but not just putting it back and hoping that it's okay, scanning it with an AV engine to ensure that it's clean before you put, put it back. And we've taken that now to a, a, a new level. Um, and a, a term that's new to me as a, a non-security person is, is uh, we have this ability to use Yara rules. So the ability to analyze content with inside a, a, a workload. And that's using you know, open source Yara rules that um, you can either download or you can write your own looking for particular signatures, looking for onion links, looking for any content. And uh, another use case for this is possibly G GDPR, where you might want to look for a specific piece of information within a, within a workload. So the ability to scan using YAR rules is, again, now nat native into the product. Um, automated clean recovery. So Zubair mentioned our orchestration tool. If you're recovering at scale because you've had some incident that you need to recover from, we can now orchestrate that in a clean manner. So we can literally look at a, a backup and say, right, well, restore the first clean recovery point that you've got in this backup, but do that at scale. So you know, backup number one, well, that's, that's potentially infected, so we'll go to number two and actually do it in an automated fashion. And then finally, we've got our Veeam uh, continuous data protection. So we're literally doing transaction level replication of virtual machines from A to B. We now have the ability with something we call an IO anomaly visualizer to actually look at you know, spikes in that change. So you, know, you might have a normal pattern over a period of time, but suddenly you've got a spike. We'll notify you of that and give you the ability to literally roll that workload back to a, a point in time before that, uh, that incident took place. So a few more sort of um, infrastructure-based things, if you like. Something we call four, four eyes admin protection, four eyes authorization. If you've got a backup administrator or somebody has compromised your backup infrastructure using an admin account, well, don't let them delete backups. Don't let them delete jobs. Don't let them change retention. Don't let them do lots of different things that could potentially compromise your data protection status. Have a second one. Yeah, so a, a second pair of eyes, that four eyes author authorization requirement. Security and compliance analyzer. It kind of goes a little bit back to some of the... Um, some of the uh, stuff I was talking about earlier with regard to um, security best practice. There's an analyzer built into the console now that not just from a theme backup perspective and you know, have you got immutability enabled, have you got encryption enabled, all those sorts of generic backup things, if you like, but also looking at the infrastructure. You know, have you got SMB version one enabled? Have you got RDP enabled on the backup? All those kind of normal things that allow, you can press the button, analyze that environment, have it scheduled to run and notify if something's changed. You know, has somebody turned RDP on that shouldn't have done? So again, sort of a, it's a, a, another security focused uh, element. And then we have our Veeam Threat Center. So a, a single pane of glass dashboard that essentially scores your security posture from, from, a, from a backup infrastructure perspective. You know, what, what's, the, what's the score from your security compliance um, uh, scan, for example? You know, uh, have you got malware detections? Have you got immutability? Are your recovery points meeting your RPOs that you've defined? All these things in a single pane of glass. And finally, our, our scanning, ta scanning uh, table view, uh, and all the different things that I've, I've touched on here, inline scanning. So uh, looking for, as it says there, bulk changes in files, encrypted files, um, you know, uh, and it's done at a proxy level, so it's done when the backup is running. That's really important to, to, to point that out. So it's not an after the event thing, it's a during the event. File index scanning, looking for you know, mass changes in file extension um, alterations from the previous run of the backup. Yara scanning, content analysis um, you know, after the event. And the AV scanning, which we've had for, for a number of years. So. I've probably, probably got the wrong audience to talk about Yara rules and what are they, but the, the point is that they are 
they are therefore, uh, I'll touch on it in a second, but sort of indicators of compromise, I think, is the, is the correct term. But looking, you know, you, you've had an event or potentially had an event. Let me use this YAR rule, let me use this set of rules to go and in investigate, go and scan those machines and find out if I've got any of that content present in my, in my backups. As it says there, it can be used for anything. Credit card numbers is a, is a, is a, you know, a PII type uh, use case. And then finally, say those indicators of compromise. Yara rules very much an indicator of compromise, not an indicator of attack necessarily, but other tools within the portfolio. You know, certainly the integrations with third party uh, products give you that uh, approach from, from both perspectives, from an attack and a, and a compromise perspective. And then we have a, a Veeam Security Best Practices Guide, um, again, built around some of the things we've discussed already. Another QR, QR code there to give you access to that, uh, that document. Whether you're a Veeam customer or not a Veeam customer, there's a lot, of, you know, a lot of security best practices when it comes to backup infrastructure that aren't vendor specific. Right? They are best practices for a reason. And, and if you think back to that diagram I had, you know, a lot of that is keeping those things separate and keeping your backups safe uh, away from any attack. Back to you. Yeah, cheers, Dave. Um, for anyone who wants to have a play about with any of that, uh, any testing, other things that Dave's run through, feel free to take a scan of the QR code. Um, the update, as Dave said, came out last year, so it's it's uh, it's out, it's available, it's something you guys can, can use, you can play about with. Run a number of trials, you'll have a team behind you, ourselves, the wider team at Veeam to, to support you in that process as well, if you did want inter to interact with us around any of your testing or any questions that you have. And on top of that, you also have what we call our community edition, the chance to actually use it fully fledged without any challenges, but just on a restricted amount of licenses that you can use. But as, as we've covered, you can utilize it to detect and identify cyber threats, respond, recover faster from ransomware, and gain that full compliance around uh, your data as well. Um, Dave, we jump to the next one, and I guess we'll be closing here with this. Um, a final QR code for you guys. We have a, a, an event coming up in, in, in the near future, 18th of April at 11 a.m. It's a webinar, uh, Frontline Tactics, Learning from Real Hacker Encounters. We've got some guest speakers who will actually take you through some of the challenges that they've seen around cybersecurity, as well as uh, their data protection strategies and the challenges that they faced around ensuring that their data remains protected. Um, and with that, they'll also be talking around how Veeam has supported them, as well as other best practices in that as well. So feel free to, 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 to scan that QR code or take a snap. I'll leave it on the screen for another second. Um, we're upstairs. We've got a stand up there. So feel free to come across, ask any questions, have a, a further conversation. If you missed any other QR codes, we'll have our laptops available. So we can all share that afterwards and you can grab a scan after. With that, we'll say thank you. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate your time.